Rooster Teeth is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Don't let your internet provider see all the sites you visit. Hide your browsing activity at expressvpn.com slash rooster. So today specifically, we're talking about Air France flight 447. The flight departed from Rio May 31st, 2009 at 7.29 p.m. Brazilian Standard Time, which is 10.29 p.m. Universal Time. And it left Brazilian Atlantic radar surveillance at 1.49 a.m. Universal Time. At about 1.55 a.m. Universal Time, Captain Dubois woke up First Officer Robert so they could switch places so that he could take his break. At 2.06 a.m., uh, Bonin warned the cabin crew that they were about to enter some turbulence. A few minutes later, the aircraft encountered icing conditions and uh, ice crystals started to accumulate in the pitot tubes, which are little tubes that measure the airspeed on the outside of the plane. So in response, First Officer Bonin mm -hmm. turned the plane slightly to the left and decreased the speed from 546 knots to 533 knots, which is 628 miles an hour to 613 miles an hour. And the engine anti-ice system was turned on. So he's doing the right thing. He's mm -hmm. turning a little bit, taking the speed down where it should be and turning on the anti-icing system to be safe. At 2.10 uh, universal time, the autopilot disengages. The thought is that it's probably because the pitot tubes became blocked and the pitot tubes are how the plane measures its airspeed. So, you know, when they get blocked, the computer doesn't know what the airspeed is. So the autopilot disengages here. Yeah, it probably got frozen over. Probably, right. You know, like I said, they were encountering a storm. There were some icing conditions. Uh, it's possible that they did get frozen over. When the autopilot disconnected, the aircraft transitioned from what's called normal law to alternate law two. Okay, well, this, is, <laughs> this mm. is something that's incredibly complicated. I feel like I barely have a grasp on it because I say all the time, I'm not a pilot, but I'm going to try my best to, to explain what's going on here. Okay. So when I talk about normal law and alternate law too, these are flight control modes the computer in the plane uses in order to translate the pilot's control inputs to the control surfaces of the plane. So in normal law, there's five protections. Mm -hmm. It's pitch attitude, load factor limitations, high speed, high angle of attack, and bank angle. So it's just kind of there to make sure the, the pilot doesn't input some crazy input to the plane that makes it do something dangerous. So basically, the plane is not going to respond the way that they're used to at this point because the law has changed. Uh, so Bonin declared that he is now taking control of the plane. And this particular plane, which is manufactured by Airbus, they have little side sticks. They look like joysticks that are to the sides of the pilots, and that's how they input their controls. So it's, it's like off to their sides. Yeah. Due to the turbulence, the plane started a roll to the right. So Bonin adjusted by deflecting his side stick to the left. So one of the consequences of alternate law two is it increases the aircraft's sensitivity to roll. And they didn't realize the flight mode had changed. So Bonin overcorrected on his input. He moved it thinking it was still in normal law. But since it was in alternate law, the plane moved much more than he expected. Oh. So for the next 30 seconds, the plane kind of rolls back and forth as, you know, Bonin's trying to correct uh, his inputs. Does it not alert them that it's switched to alternate law? There is an indicator on one of the displays that normally it says normal law. It does switch to say alternate law too. I can't speak to the A330 cockpit specifically, but it might be a very small indicator on one of the displays. Hmm. And it might not be something they immediately look at. In addition to, you know, trying to correct this role, Bonin also starts pulling back on the stick, raising the nose a little bit. Then the aircraft stall warning sounds briefly twice by the time Bonin had controlled the roll, the plane was climbing at a speed of nearly 7,000 feet per minute. And to put that in a frame of reference, when you're on a plane and you're climbing in an airliner, normally you're only climbing two to 3,000 feet per minute. Mm -hmm. uh, he was climbing at 7,000 feet per minute. So they were really shooting up. That's why it slowed down be because yeah, yes. they're just going straight up. Yeah, they're not, not necessarily straight up, but they're going up at a yeah. pretty significant angle. Uh, at 2.10 a.m., the left side instruments recorded a sharp rise in the airspeed to 223 knots, or 257 miles an hour. So at this point, the pedal icing had cleared. Okay. That's why the, the airspeed rose so sharply. However, Bonin was still pulling back on his stick, making nose-up inputs. At 2.11 a.m., the aircraft climbed to 38,000 feet and had an angle of attack of 16 degrees, and the thrust levers were set to fully forward, and the angle of attack actually increased to 30 degrees. If the aircraft was in normal law, the plane would not have allowed this to happen. It would not have allowed this angle of attack to reach 30 degrees, but they were still in alternate law too, so that protection did not exist for them. Gotcha. Uh, the plane lost lift because of this high angle of attack, and it stalled. And do you remember what we said, what you're supposed to do in a stall? Tilt it down so that it increases speed. Exactly. Or Since they're at cruising altitude, they should have plenty of altitude to 
nose down, increase their speed, and get out of a stall. Yeah. However, at this point, Bonin exclaimed that he no longer has any control of the airplane now. What? Right. First Officer Robert responds by saying, controls to the left, which is a command that means he wants to take control and fly the plane. Robert pushes his side stick forward to lower the nose and recover from the stall, but Bonin did not recognize this exchange of controls, and he kept pulling back on his stick. Oh, no. These two inputs canceled each other out because, you know, the computer takes in inputs and figures out what to do to the plane. One person's pulling back, the other person's pushing forward. The plane cancels each other out. To make matters a little worse, the way that they're situated, they can't easily see each other's side sticks. It's mm-hmm. not like the side sticks are in the middle of the plane. They're on the sides. So at 2.11 a.m., Captain Dubois re-enters the cabin after having been summoned by First Officer Robert, and he asks what's going on. Because at this point, several alarms are going off. The angle of attack is now at 40 degrees. Uh, the aircraft had fallen to 35,000 feet and was descending at a rate of 10,000 feet per minute. Robert told Dubois they had lost control of the plane and they don't understand what is happening. Robert then to himself says, climb four times. You know, maybe he was just kind of praying or, you know, hoping that the plane Uh climbed. Then Bonin replies, but I've been at maximum nose up for a while. And then when Dubois hears this, he realized that Bonin's been causing the stall the whole time. Uh Oh, And he shouts at him, no, 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 don't climb. No, no, no. First officer Robert told Bonin to give him control of the plane. Bonin complied. Robert pushed his stick forward to try to regain lift, but at this point the aircraft was already really low and the ground proximity warning system sounds an alarm, warning the crew about oh. an imminent crash into the ocean. Uh, and in response to this, Bonin pulls back again on the stick without telling the other people. The last recording on the CVR is Dubois saying, 10 degrees pitch attitude, and the flight data recorder stopped at 2.14 a.m., which was three oh. hours and 45 minutes after takeoff. The aircraft's ground speed was 107 knots, which is 123 miles an hour or 198 kilometers an hour. And it was descending at a rate of almost 11,000 feet a minute, which was 124 miles an hour or 200 kilometers an hour. So it hit really fast. Okay. And so basically, if they were at cruising altitude of around 38, 40, they had like three to three, three to and four and minutes, minutes yeah, yeah. To, to figure it out and correct it. If you enjoyed that animated episode of Black Box Down, you can watch the next one right now over at the Black Box Down YouTube channel. Just click the link down below me. You'll go there. Do you like this one? You'll like that one. While you're over at the channel, don't forget to subscribe. There we get all kinds of new Black Box Down stuff over there.